Tell us about um, when you were out on famously out on the Monsters of Rock tour. Uh, you guys followed Metallica in 1988 on that tour. When you went into that tour, were you already familiar with the the energy of Metallica's live performance, or was that something you sort of watched unfold as you were touring with them on the Monsters of Rock? Yeah, we were we were not too aware of the higher of the natural hierarchy of the bands when we were, you know, when we got that tour, uh, meaning, you know, there's a, there's a self-imposed hierarchy of the, uh, the rock, you know, you've got so-and-so opening and you've got so-and-so headlining, everybody else in between. And we didn't pay a whole lot of attention to that, you know? And then as the tour evolved, of course, we realized that we were misplaced. Uh, yeah. Metallica definitely should have been, uh, built over us, uh, uh, so yeah, we were we became aware of that very quickly. <laughs> but here's another there's a another component to that, which is that uh, Don has conspired uh, to somehow uh, take over the band and announce before the tour that he would be expanding the group, keeping the name, getting a new record deal, and hiring other people. Basically, essentially finding a way to fire us without because it couldn't technically fire us so that was his way around it and he announced that uh in a meeting before the tour started and that probably wasn't a good idea because i did you know i uh, it was demoralizing and so i yeah. would have to drag myself out of the stage and i was so depressed i was just a really uh you know i was like okay we're getting to the thing that we worked 10 years for our whole lives for uh, and we're finally here. We achieved it, and we could go on to much greater things at this point. It would be a launching point for all of us, for our careers, and for longevity, the band, and everything. We'd be set. And instead, he took the gamble to just bet, you know, play it all for his benefit and leave us in, you know, dust in history at the side of the road. And 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 that just was crushing that another human being could do that to their friends. You know? yeah. um, it was just it was just unbelievable to me. It was just it, Kind of destroyed my whole, uh, you know, worldview. You know, that's some you know, sabotage, man. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, you know, you just stab somebody in the back like that. You know, that worked so hard. I mean, I'd wow. written all the songs and worked tirelessly to, and and insisted that we all share in the the spoils. I, I was the, the kind of the ran lead on that. I was the guy that fought the battles to make sure that we all shared equally in every dollar. We all got a, a quarter for everything and i you know i would have benefited uh much more than anyone else if i had agreed to just get paid for what i did you know like well and you work. you guys like, for, this is scary i did that with everybody you know yeah, nobody else kind of, wrote those songs i wrote those songs so um, yeah i'm sorry yeah. to interrupt i'm sorry to interrupt but i have to say you guys um maybe arguably created a sound as well so for him to sabotage that at your some kind of peak peaking moment at least, that sounds terrible uh, because you guys no, created. I'm not saying this in an indicting way. I'm just no. and I'm so you know, but I'm not saying no. this in an indictment or get some feud. I'm just saying that uh, it to explain uh, my what what I was what was in my head when I was on stage for those okay. thirty shows or whatever it was. I was really torn because of course i wanted to play well and, and perform well and, and appreciate the fans but at the same time i was completely depressed about the situation yeah that part broke me, so. yeah earlier in the conversation you alluded to your hair um and i wanted to ask you when you first came out and we first saw got a glimpse of george lynch you had this really unique especially in the world of hard rock and heavy metal really unique hairstyle it was this, this two-tone shag mullet looking thing what inspired your look back in those days Aja Gugu. i knew you were going to say that Aja Gugu. <laughs> yeah i love it a lot it. of people don't know that that singer is the same guy that sang never ending story song the song yeah. never yeah. same guy yeah yeah, with the big floppy flying dog. So it was Kaji Gugu. Interesting. I was I was curious to know if you were uh, like a. I actually a, brought the poster of him into the the hairdresser. Wow, wow. So, like that. wow. <laughs> so was that? 
Was that a hard sell for you in the early days? Obviously, it was a, a sticking point for for the Osborns, but in in the club scene, were there guys that were like, "Man, this guy can play," but dude, his look is so trippy. No, 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 no. What what, what was challenging was I still had my job at the liquor delivery place at Watts. <laughs> that was a deliver liquor projects, my yeah. parts of town, and liquor stores and stuff with that haircut. <laughs> I could see I that. Got some, definitely got some looks and some comments. From that. 